This video was made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello there, I'm Nemo and welcome to a new episode of... Uh, Reginald, I'm gonna put you here and you'll tell me later what is going on, okay? Weird. A bit of a special episode today because instead of answering three questions asked by subscribers, today I'll be answering eight questions asked by kids. That's gonna be fun. Let's do it. First question. How do regular ducks work? <laughs> what do you mean how they work? <laughs> okay, I'll answer it. So. Ducks are living organisms, right? Just like any other life form on planet Earth, their bodies made of cells arranged in a structured way. In the case of ducks, their body is essentially made of a beak, two webbed feet, and a lot of feathers in between. All living things react and adapt to their environment. They also require energy for growth, movement, and reproduction. Ducks they are omnivorous. They feed on a variety of grains, aquatic plants, insects, and fish, and they use that energy to become bigger, to swim, to walk, to fly, and also to, um, to make more duck legs. Fun fact, the word duck comes from an old English word that means diver, which is extremely appropriate because Ducks are indeed excellent divers, very well adapted. Just look at their highly waterproof feathers. Ducks are perfect. I should really get a tattoo of a duck. Next. How do regular... Oh no, I asked that question already. Next question. How do robot ducks work? <laughs> Seriously? Okay. The, the term robot is generally used to refer to a machine that replicates the appearance and or the functions of a living being. A robot duck, in its simplest version, would have to replicate the essence of a duck, basically floating and being extremely cute. And because a robot duck doesn't eat, it needs some form of energy, generally mechanical, like a clockwork motor, or electrical, like batteries. Sir, I believe you might be wrong. About what? My ancestor was able to eat. The digesting duck, sir. Huh. Yeah, you're kinda right. In the year 1739, in France, the inventor Jacques de Vaucanson created a duck automaton named canard digérateur meaning digestic duck in French. This rudimentary robot duck had the apparent ability to eat, digest, and poop. And I said apparent because, well, this canard didn't actually have the chemical ability to metabolize food. In fact, the poop consisted of pre-prepared breadcrumb pellets that I green, a sophisticated poop trick. Voltaire, just one of the most famous and influential writers in French history, wrote that without the Vaucanson stuck, you would have nothing to remind you of the glory of France. And I think the time has come to change the French flag. Next! What do hippos do? Well, Hippopotamus means river horse, eight thousand newtons of fragile force. Underwater, they keep cool and rest. Five minutes, they can hold their breath. What does a hippo do? It keeps cool, yeah. Can I be a hippo too? Under the 
surface you gotta stay for 16 hours every day if a true hippo you wanna be gotta be one with a river and sea can i have a pet hippo get a cat can i pet a hippo no don't do that can i be a hippo yes actually you can you just have to um keep cool and underwater just keep cool and rest 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 Oof. That's what hippos do, I guess. Stay underwater and not writing stupid songs. Um, hippos don't do that. I mean, as far as we know, nature might surprise us. What do walruses... Walruses? How do you pronounce this word? Wait a second. Walrus, walrus. What? Walrus. 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 <laughs> Walrus. I'm not convinced. Walruses. 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 Okay. Um, so what do walruses uh, sound like? Um, actually, very much like a lion. That was actually a lion. Um, this is a walrus. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Next question! What language do dragons, owls, spiders, peacocks, lions, <laughs> mushrooms, and stingrays speak? Who? A Mega Man reference, I see. Nice. I've never played Mega Man. Should I play Mega Man? Which Mega Man should I play? Let me know in the comments. So it really depends what you mean with speaking. If you mean the use of a system of communication as structured as English, well, these organisms you mentioned, they do not speak. Well, except maybe for dragons, which are fantastical creatures that are not bound to the laws of our natural world, they probably speak through magic or telepathy. But if we stay in the sphere of our own reality here on planet Earth, every living organism is exchanging energy and information with its surrounding. So when does that exchange of information start being labeled as communication? It's a bit arbitrary. It's a question of definitions. Owls and lions, they can communicate with uh, conspecifics with vocal signals. Something we humans also do and XL at. Nemo. Yeah? Nemo. Yeah, what do you want? Why do you call me if when I respond, you don't say anything? Other animals like the peacock or the stingray they use visual cues to communicate. The male peacock harbors beautiful feathers to attract the female, while some stingrays show very striking colors to warn their predators of their venomous ability. So, I see you coming. What about the stupid mushroom, you're gonna ask? First of all, you stop that. Mushrooms are not stupid, okay? Did you know that mushrooms are actually more closely related to humans than they are to plants? True fact, here you go, it's for free. But do they communicate? Well, yes. Mycorrhizal or mycorrhizal, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Mycorrhizal. 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 Maco, myco. Mycorrhizal. Mycorrhizal. Okay, sorry. Um, so, do they communicate? Yes, mycorrhizal networks are essentially sophisticated underground highways between mushrooms and plants. They use that to communicate and to exchange nutrients. So, what's the conclusion? To a certain extent, um, all living things do communicate. The language of nature is 
extremely rich and diverse, it's a bit of the job of certain scientists to decipher this language and to learn from it. Next question. How can cats get wings, like in cat wings? I'm sorry to disappoint, but in our world, cats do not have wings. But I see several ways to make a cat with wings. Number one, get or make a cute winged costume for your cat. Boom, done. Is it ethical to put a costume on an animal for fun? I don't know, you decide. Still very cute though. Why are you so cute? The second solution to get a cat with wings is to wait wait a very long time. Why? Let me explain. Wings have appeared at different time points in evolution, in several taxa, independently from each other. Insects, dinosaurs, mammals. Uh, there is a chance that in several million years, felines develop wings. Of course, it would have to make sense biologically, but it is not impossible. Very unlikely to see something like this, though, is generally easier to modify an appendage that already exists rather than create a new one. Which is also the reason why wyverns are more biologically accurate than dragons. Now, if we wait long enough for this new cool winged animal to emerge, would that species still be considered a cat though? Maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe we would call it a sh... a spumbo, the magnificent Spumbo. Spumbo. We could also accelerate the process of evolution by genetically engineering cats to develop wings. But, you know, why would we do that? Why would we create such a beautiful and cute and fluffy animal you can cuddle with mid-air? Why would you call it d'Artagnan and spend time with it and, you know, build beautiful and unforgettable memories? But you know, turn on the 3D buyer printer. Oof. Also, representation of felines with wings date back to prehistory. But if the winged cat is so represented in human culture, where does the inspiration come from? Well, one explanation could be a medical one, an anatomical anomaly, like supernumerary limbs. In fact, cats affected by this condition can grow an extra pair of limbs. And when that happens close to the shoulders, they can look like a pair of fluffy wings. Mm -mm. No. Yes, I did it! Okay, next question. Why is Earth called Earth? Of all the planets in the solar system, Earth is the only one with a name that doesn't come from the Greco-Roman mythology. The name Earth derives from the 8th century Anglo-Saxon word Erda, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, which means ground or soil. Now, Earth has a lot of different names in different languages, but there seems to be a common thread that these names were all derived from the same meaning in their origins ground or soil. So, if you speak another language, write in the comments your translation of the word earth and if it also means ground or soil. Thank you. Next! <clears throat> How does a volcano erupt? Volcano, 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 vol volcano. Mm. Well, I think volcanoes are quite a complex subject that deserve its own video. So let's try to make it very, very simple. A volcano erupts when a hot molten rock called magma and gas escape from an opening in the Earth's surface. The thing is that if the magma is very thick, 
gas bubbles can be trapped in it. Pressure builds up and when the pressure is too much, that's when a very explosive eruption can occur. A bit like a terrible, terrible, terrible fart from Earth. Earth farts. One little thing to point out is that magma is a term used for molten rock that is underground, while lava is the term for molten rock that has reached the surface. It's the same thing, but different. Fun fact, when lava erupts underwater, we call it pillow lava, because it is structured like a pillow. Next, and I know what you're asking yourself. No, it is not comfy, do not take a nap on it. I don't, I don't even know how, I'm not even sure how you would sleep underwater anyway. You would have to be very good at holding your breath. Yeah, just, just don't do it. You probably burn the back of your head also. Just, trust me, just don't do it. Oh, we already reached the last question. What can lava kill? Well, to kill something, that thing has to be alive first, right? This might be the smartest things I have ever seen in my life. So, we are talking about living organisms. If it's true that a lot of animals and bacteria can survive at very close proximity to volcanoes, lava itself is not suitable for life at all. In fact, lava temperature ranges from 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius and no biological structure can survive that. So lava kills everything. Lava kills everything. Everything. Everything you know. <clears throat> All the people in your life Everybody you ever loved, lava can kill them. Maybe I should cut this. This is a quack for kids. Hmm. Maybe I won't. Are you okay, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I think. Why are you... Oh, is it because... Is it because I haven't done a duck joke in this episode of quack? Um, wait, 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 wait. So, Reginald, what is your, what is, who is your favorite musician? Is it Drake? Because, <laughs> you know, okay. Mm. Okay, sorry. So, what is going on with your body? I have been tinkering with the interdimensional crystal, sir. I think I have found a way to channel its energy to open windows into other worlds. Parallel universes. Okay, that's... That's very cool and scary. So it means we're going full multiverse, right? You know that Marvel and DC are already doing that. Sir, we are not in a comic. This is real life. This is happening whether you want it or not. Yeah, you're right. This is real life. So what's next? Infinite possibilities, sir. Okay. Hello there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing, becoming a patron on Patreon, and also joining our beautiful Discord community. You're welcome to join us. Join us, join us. Come, come, come. Um, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.